Chapter six is the mole. Um, the first part is about the mole. So a mole is a way of counting atoms and molecules. Um, they're very small, and so we can't count them normal ways like we would count items. Um, but the, a mole is defined similar to how a dozen is defined. It does, a dozen is defined as 12 items. And so it doesn't matter what the atoms are, 12 makes a dozen. And it's the same thing with a mole, only the number is much bigger. So a mole is defined as 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd items. So bigger number, but the same idea. It doesn't matter what the items are, but usually it's atoms or molecules or electrons because it's such a big number. And that number is called Avogadro's number. So a mole of any element will weigh the atomic mass in grams. So the mole lets us count atoms by their mass. So for example, if you look at the periodic table, and I put just a little piece of the periodic table here, this number right here, which is the atomic mass, is the grams of a mole. So a mole of naturally occurring hydrogen has 1.01 .01 grams. A mole of naturally occurring lithium has 6.94 grams, and a mole of naturally occurring beryllium has 9.01 grams. So the atomic mass is the mass of one mole. Let's use the mole concept to answer some questions. The first question, how many atoms are in 12.01 grams of carbon? Now to answer all these questions, we need the periodic table. So I look, put a little piece of the periodic table up here. Um, you probably should have your periodic table in front of you while you do this um, show. And so it's important to notice right here, the 12.01, is the atomic mass of carbon. So how many atoms are in 12.01 grams of carbon? Well, 12.01 is one mole. And so how many atoms are in a mole? Well, we know that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, how about what is the mass of one mole of calcium? So again, we look at the periodic table, we find calcium, and here's the atomic mass, 40.08. So 40.08, what does that mean? That's grams in one mole. So the mass of one mole is 40.08 grams. How many atoms are in one mole of sulfur? Well, this one, one mole, how many atoms are in one mole? Well, that's always 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. <coughs> Excuse me, atoms are in one mole of anything. So let's see if we, oh, here's our question here. If you have 0.1 mole of bromine atoms, so now not a whole mole, 0.1 mole, a tenth of a mole. So how many bromine atoms would you have? You have one mole of bromine atoms, 0.1 mole. Well, if one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, a tenth of that has got to be 6.022 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. All right, what is the mass in grams of this bromine? Well, if I had one mole, the mass would be 79.90. So if I have a tenth of a mole, it's going to be a tenth of that. So think of moving the decimal over, 7.990 grams. Now, we should also consider significant figures here. So this has only two significant figures. So instead of calling it 7.990 grams, let's do that in two significant figures. That would be 8.0 grams. And also the 6.022 times 10 to the 22nd atoms, two significant figures, 
would be 6.0 times 10 to the 22nd atoms. So here these all are written out, typed out a little more cleanly. Often we're not dealing with an individual element, we're dealing with a compound and we have molecules to deal with instead of atoms. So instead of looking at the atomic mass, we're going to look at the molar mass. So the molar mass is the sum of the atomic mass of the atoms in the molecule. And we'll use it just like we would the atomic mass for an element. So first of all, consider carbon dioxide. To find the molar mass, we just find the mass of each element. So carbon, again, we find it on the periodic table, 12.01 grams per mole. And oxygen is 16, but we have two of them because of that two subscript. So that makes 32. When we add them together, we get 44.01. Now notice the unit I put on it, grams per mole. That is a really useful unit for the atomic mass or a molar mass. And that makes sense as to how many grams are in one mole. So let's try a practice problem here. Find the molar mass of calcium nitrate. So I recommend pause it and do this on your own and then turn it back on and see the answer. So calcium nitrate, we have one calcium. So I look up calcium and it is 40.08. And then I have nitrogen, there's two of them. Nitrogen is 14.01, so 14.01 times two, that's 28.02. And oxygen, we have six. 3 times 2, 6 oxygen. Oxygen is 16.00 times 6. I'll do that one on my calculator. So 16 times 6. That gives me 96. And when I add all of these together, 96 plus 28.02 plus 40.08 equals I get 164.10. Uh, grams per mole. So that's finding the molar mass. Interesting fact, if you have gases, the higher molar mass of a gas, the denser the gas is. And that's why a helium balloon floats because helium has a real small molar mass of 4.003, where carbon dioxide, imagine blowing it up with your mouth, you'd get a lot of carbon dioxide, has a much higher molar mass, which gives it a more density, and those balloons sink. So an important conversion we're going to do is go from mass to moles to numbers. And, and it's really important that you be able to master this calculation. We're going to use it in many different types of problems. And the way you do it, going from mass to moles, you use the molar mass. And if you have the mass and you want the moles, you divide by the molar mass. If you have the moles and you want the mass, you multiply by the molar mass. So your conversion factor is molar mass. Molar mass has units of grams per mole. So you can see how that would convert between grams and moles. Now, if you need to go from moles to number, moles to number, it's Avogadro's number. To go from moles to number, you'll multiply by Avogadro's number. To go from number to moles, you'll divide by Avogadro's number. And so remember, the units on Avogadro's number are items, so moles are, uh, um, atoms or molecules per mole, okay? So let's say it's atoms per mole. So you can see how that converts between moles and numbers. So these are the conversions we're going to do, and I'm going to show you we're going to use unit analysis. So let's go on to some problems that use this.
Let's use the unit analysis method to solve some problems involving moles, grams, and numbers. So we'll start with identifying a given and a find. So looking at number 1a, suppose you have 0.565 moles of HI. How many grams of HI do you have? So our find is right here, grams of HI. Our given is this piece right here, 0 0.565 moles of HI. So we're going from moles to grams. And so the conversion we're going to need is the molar mass. So let's find a molar mass of HI. So here you go to the pe periodic table. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.01. .01, and iodine is 126.9. We add those together, we get 127.91 grams per mole. And that's our molar mass, and we'll use that as a conversion. So we start with our given, 0 0.565 moles of HI. Okay, use our conversion factor, and since we have moles on the top, we'll put one mole on the bottom of HI, and the 127.9 grams of HI on the top. Okay, the moles cancel, and we'll, we get grams. Or you can think about it from this path, that what we've done, we multiply by the molar mass. So I go to my calculator and I do 0.565 times 127.9 and I get um, keeping three significant figures 72.3 grams of HI. All right and that's the answer to part A. Now to part B how many molecules of HI. So now instead of finding grams of HI, we want to find molecules of HI. So now we're starting at moles and going to number. And so the process there is to multiply by Avogadro's number. So again, we're going to start with our 0 0.565 moles of HI. And now we want the one mole on the bottom and the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules on top. Okay, the moles cancel. And now we multiply those numbers. So 0.565 times 6.02. Remember the exponential notation, I hit the exponent key, 23. And keeping three significant figures, this gives me 3.40 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. All right, and so that's the first problem. Looking at the second problem, again, think about our given and find. So our given now is molecules. 5.000 times 10 to the 24th, uh, let's rewrite that, 10 to the 24th molecules. Okay, in part A, the find is moles. Find moles. Okay, so this time we're starting at number and going to moles. So we start with our 5.000 times 10 to the 24th molecules. And Avogadro's number is our conversion, but this time we need that on the bottom. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd 
molecules, and I don't really have right, room to write it out, we'll just call it MC, abbreviate, per um, one mole. And MC is not an official abbreviation, I just don't have room to write it, okay? And so now I'm dividing. So I go to my calculator, 5 exponent 24 divided by 6.022 exponent 23 equals, and this time I'm going to keep four significant figures. I'm going to keep 8.303, and the unit is moles because the molecules are canceled. And that is the answer to part A. And now when we go to part B, it's asking how many grams. So instead of finding moles, this time we want to find grams. So we're really going from number to mass, but we can't go there directly. So what we have to do is go from number to moles to mass. And since we already have the moles, that's a better starting place. So I'm going to start with the 8.303 moles. And now I'm going to need the molar mass. Uh, well, I haven't added that up yet. It's CH4. So to add that up, carbon, 12.01. Hydrogen, 1.01 times 4. So this is adding those up. It's going to give me 16.05, and that's grams per mole. So I'm going to use that number right here. Well, I want the mole on the bottom. One mole has 16.05 grams. Okay, the mole cancels, and I multiply those. So 8.033 oh, 8 is in my calculator times 16.05, and that gives me, um, keeping four significant figures, 133.3 grams of CH4. And that's the answer to part B. So that all that was kind of messy, so let me put it up here in a nice, clean, typed format so you can review that. And hopefully you understand those. These are really important calculations, so if you don't understand these, Watch it again, watch another video, try some of the practice problems in the book uh, so that you can do these.